Hey everyone, so uh, I, I can't hear myself, I hope you can hear me. So I'm Anthony Rose, co-founder and CTO at Zbox. Uh, we use uh, Civilution services for some of the features in Zbox, which I'll show you. Uh, we like the guys at Civilution, and so when they asked me to present, I said, sure. So what I, who's been to the second screen uh, social TV presentations today? Anyone? Okay, great. I'm, I'm told you didn't miss anything if you didn't go. Everything you want to know about the future of participation in social TV, you'll hear in the next 15 minutes, if, if you can hear. So, you read a lot about second screen television, about social TV, and you read a lot, it's all about Twitter and so on. But what I'd like to do, okay, we need some help with the uh, presentation. <laughs> this second screen, so, Everyone knows increasingly people are sitting in front of their TV with their smartphone, with their tablet, doing something in front of their television. Often, that one works. No, that one's backwards, okay. Hello, it doesn't, oh, there we go, it works. Okay, so people are in front of their television with their smartphone or tablet and they're interacting, they're doing something. They're often doing their email but increasingly they're doing things related to the TV show. Broadcasters are beginning to tap into this. Second screen companies are making a market out of it. What I'd like to talk about is the evolution in 15 minutes or less of what I call now participation television. So you read about social TV, but in fact social tweeting and so on is one of many things. And what I'd like to try and do is show you some of the class of things that are available and will evolve over the coming years. So in our consumer research, we find the first thing people want in front of their TV is program discovery. Help me find something to watch. That's not about um, necessarily social. In fact, in our consumer research, we find very different demographics. One group of people we call TV mavens. These are people who love watching television, but they don't want to talk about it. They want to watch maybe MasterChef or they want to watch Downton Abbey. For them, it's all about TV planning. They watch lots of television. They want to program their VCR to not have a clash between programs. They want a remote control. They want to watch video on demand and sync with it, but they don't want to tweet about it. So when we think about these participation experiences, we shouldn't think about one size fits everybody. We should think about the different demographics. And often the de demographics are very different to us. We see surveys that say there's a lot of video on demand. There's a lot of people wanting remote control. And you scroll down to the bottom of the survey and you see that the people who have been surveyed are white, male, 35 to 45, $100,000 income. And actually that's not everyone in the world. So think about different demographics. But the first thing, people would love new ways to find things on TV, not just a program guide. Something to tell you what are the hot shows, something to say what your friends are watching. So that's the first thing to think about. The next thing is, of course, social. And today, social, as Twitter would have you believe it, is dominated by Twitter. I think we're going to see a lot of noise from Facebook shortly. Uh, to show that they actually are very big, much bigger than Twitter. But actually, we've got TV rooms. So we've launched TV rooms recently in Zbox, and TV rooms are going fantastically because TV rooms let you have a threaded conversation. For a broadcaster, it gives them some level of moderation. Everything you say doesn't have to be in 140 characters. You can post rich media. And I think you all know the problem that you have your professional life where you're writing about the future of television and you have your TV life where you're saying, get off, he's an idiot. How do those come together? And TV rooms are our take in addition to tweets on social. The next one's information, which is, um, you know, who's, who's the actor? Can I get more information on the recipe and so on? And I won't bore you with that. The next one, and I think really key for the future is participation TV. So today we've got first screen and we've got second screen. What will the future be? Taking a step back, maybe think about television in three or four phases. Once upon a time, there was television and the broadcasters made programs and you sat on the couch and watched alone. 
millions of people watched the show, but you couldn't talk to any of them. And then came the rise of the second screen kids. Smart tech guys created these applications on your iPad or iPhone where you could connect to other people. You could tweet, you could talk to them, and you could talk to each other about the program. But the broadcaster kept making the same program. And that's broadly what we see today. The same programs that have been made for 50 years and now tech companies letting people connect to each other around it. But I think what will happen very soon is the next phase, which is broadcasters making programming designed to be watched in an interactive way. And that will start with what I call participation TV, where when you're playing along in Zbox, when you vote or poll, when you uh, have a mood or anything, that can get fed back into the TV s uh, playout system. And that's going to start in a fairly gentle way where the broadcaster will connect its on-screen graphics system back into the voting and polling on the second screen. And the result will be not just playing along on the second screen, but seeing the results on your TV set. Now, this could result in some truly terrible television shows being made, and people may really hate these graphics on screen, but I think that will rapidly evolve. So when you have a smart TV, or a Comcast set-top box, maybe a Sky set-top box, you can turn this graphics on and off. In Europe, there are HBB TVs. So I think we'll see the rise of not first screen or second screen anymore. They'll just be what I call participation TV. And I'll show you some examples. Now, the last of the, really, the use cases is advertising. So advertising always sounds like something the user doesn't want. But in all of our surveys, we found people love the idea of buying what they see on television. If you can buy what you see, that's a win. So can we connect the advert on TV with a synchronized click button? Can we create sponsorship opportunities? And actually, that's where we use Civilutions technology. So across the US, the UK, and Australia, we ingest hundreds of channels and we use Civilution system to do real-time video fingerprinting. And when an ad is on TV, that plugs into our system, and Zbox knows when there's an ad on TV. And we can then sell a synchronized second screen ad timed to the TV ad. And I'll show you an example of that in a few moments. So when we do these things, what we do is we often will partner with broadcasters. Because once you have new technologies, new technologies can always be disruptive or they can be really partnered with the existing players. And so, for example, in the US, we have NBC, Comcast, and Viacom as partners and investors in Zbox. And instead of selling a second screen ad that competes with their TV ad, thanks to this wonderful technology, we have them selling a, a new type of enhanced TV ad that's on the first screen and the second screen. So what I always love is as new technology comes about, will the existing players embrace it or will they ignore it? And if they ignore it, it leaves the field open for new tech startups to create competing propositions. Our model has been to show new technology and to try and partner with broadcasters. So let me get on to some fun stuff here, enough of the serious stuff. So what is participation TV? So you're watching TV, what kind of things can you do linked to the show? And of course, we all know Twitter hashtags, you can tweet along, but there has to be more to it. Television in the future is not just 140 characters and a hashtag. Yes, you can vote by typing hash something or other, you know, like this. Why don't you just push a button? So we've made some fun games, um, and I'll show you a few wacky examples. So the first one is, you know, in my view, the future of television is all programs will be 12 weeks long. On week one, there'll be 12 people in the show, and on week 12, there'll be one person left. And they'll be fired, evicted, voted off the island, whatever, and everything will be one of these eviction shows. So we've made a game called the Eviction Prediction. And I'm joking, of course, by the way. But it's exactly what Apprentice, Survivor, The Voice, many other shows are like. So we've made the uh, Eviction Prediction game. Here we've got it for Big Brother. And what you can do 
is you can play along, you can uh, click who do you think will be evicted this week. There's a leaderboard. In due course, that will go the leaderboard back onto the TV show so you can see who's winning. You, after you vote, you can then, whoops, you can then share that on Facebook or Twitter to have a chance to win a prize. So this is one game that we do and we make available to our broadcast partners to create you know, new fun concepts around the show. The next one is a totally gratuitous game. So you're sitting in front of your TV. Whenever Simon Cowell is on TV, what do you want to do? You want to throw something at Simon Cowell, right? So without Fling Star Game, you can do that. We did this for The Voice and uh, for Britain's Got Talent. So you can pick one of the judges. You can pick a fruit, a vegetable, whatever it might be. It taps into your iPhone accelerometer and you throw your phone <laughs> and you can then throw something at uh, the guy on TV. And you can then go and share that on Twitter. You can throw tomato, eggs, knickers, everything. And the reason I'm showing these crazy examples is because everyone thinks that you know second screen is just social and it's just hashtags. But actually, you can have a lot of fun with all sorts of things. So let me show you a few examples now of where particularly our US broadcast partners have made enhanced shows. And the one that I like best is Take It All. So Take It All is it's a format that's been on for decades, which is you have to guess the price of the boat or the swimming pool. You know, it's $5,000, $10,000, and you'd be sitting in front of your TV at home shouting it at yourself. But working with NBC, we created a play along where the, you would f uh, log in with Facebook or Twitter. You would get time synchronous with the show, the votes, the, uh, the, the questions. You could vote, answer the question, and there'd be a real-time leaderboard which would go back into the TV to create a fully participation show. Can we roll this video, please? Oh. Now's your chance to take it all. Join your friends and other fans and play at home while you watch tonight's show. Download the free Z-Box app in Google Place or the iTunes Store and take it all. Okay, so I've got a few videos here. And uh, when you log in and play, you, can, uh, you get synchronized things. So it's an entirely synchronized play-along experience. Can we roll this video, please? The battle start right now. It's your chance to pick who you think will win. Oh, my God. Play and interact with other fans on the Voice Play-Along game in the free Z-Box app or at zbox.com now. Whoa. Okay. So, of course, one of the things for broadcasters is they don't do things just because they love the creative possibilities. They do things because it's going to make them some revenue. And in particular, when they fund a lot of this new development, how is it going to change? How is it going to give them some more revenue for the show? And really what we found with our U.S. broadcasters are using the synchronized advertising system. Can we turn the volume down slightly? We're getting feedback here, please. Um, they use a synchronized ad detection system, they use sponsorship, and they use the ability to buy things on the second screen to create new types of programming that are, uh, offer a lot more monetization. Let me sh let's roll this video and uh, we'll see a couple of examples. So, we love to cook and eat, yes? Well, thanks to American Express, get ready to enjoy my show in a whole new way. Just download Zbox, a free app that brings you live content while you're watching TV. Then, while you're enjoying life after Top Chef, go to the show Zbox page and look for a delicious item you can buy. And if you are an American Express card member, you could get a special offer. There it is, Zbox and life after Top Chef, Wednesdays only by Bravo. Until then, ciao. So, you know, television today is, uh, is an experience where you watch TV and then the television stops and they play some adverts and you make a cup of tea or you go to the bathroom and then you come back and they play a bit more of the show. Maybe one day you'll be telling your children, they'll think you're dinosaurs, that the show would like stop and they'd play some advertising for children's nappies and you don't have children. That's all going to change in the fullness of time. So how can you make things that are targeted, that are synchronized, and actually are not just about interrupting the show. And that, that example with American Express was quite a sophisticated um, 
affiliate merchant program done in conjunction with American Express and the show. So there was a merchant, it was Master Chef or Life After Top Chef, the equivalent. They had the knives or whatever it might be and synchronized, you could click to buy them. And if you paid with your American Express card, you get $35 off in a whole uh, complicated transactional thing, which was actually fascinating exactly what consumers, viewers of that program would like. But let me talk about synchronized advertising, and that's the bit where Civolution comes in. So if we can roll this video, it doesn't have sound, but imagine that you've got Zbox in front of you, and you're watching the show, it's sponsored by Kia. So Kia bought through NBC an enhanced TV uh, ad campaign. I'm hoping this video is playing. And an ad for Kia comes on TV. And synchronized with the ad on TV for Kia, you will see the system detects the ad on TV and brings in an ad. And I'm hoping this is going to synchronize to my voice. OK, I think they're hitting the play button. I'm not going to try and do anything actual live here because the Wi-Fi is so terrible, these things never work. Okay, cool. So then a Kia comes in. But unlike your television, which is broadcast to everyone, this can be targeted to you. And when you click on it, it can bring up a Kia dealership in your location. You can book a test drive and so on. So the things that people have been talking about are actually delivered. This is a campaign that's run a couple of weeks ago. It's live. That future of all these things that are possible are actually happening today. Now they're happening in fairly small numbers, but once technology provides things and once advertisers can see the results, they can buy ads that are targeted not even at a household, but at a user, a, a viewer. I might get, I'm not sure with the Kia what models they've got, but the, the black racing one, and my wife will get the pink cute one on our different uh, iPhones or iPads. So. The advertiser will get metrics. They'll only pay when people click on it. Television advertising is set, I wouldn't say to be revolutionized in the short term, but really to be enhanced. And our broadcast partners are selling large dollar campaigns that come with the television and an interactive, targetable, measurable second screen component. So just to wrap up, what I'd like to do is talk about participation TV. So today you read all about second screening, but actually for me, second screen was the tech guys coming up with funky propositions around someone else's show. The next step is really when the broadcaster is, is part of it. And I think thanks to our broadcast partnerships, we're now beginning to see that program makers are making new types of programming with the content of the second screen fed back. So you're watching the voice, and inside the Zbox app, or on a website, you can play, you can click and play along, and the output of that goes into the television set. Now, broadcasters really could do such things, in a sense, for ages with red button and so on. But it's been extremely complicated. You had to have an on-screen graphic system. You had to have the voting or polling system. And you had to have a destination where consumers could go. Could we make that super simple so that it's as easy as clicking a couple of buttons for a broadcaster to enable their show with on-screen interactive experiences? Now, I have to say, of course, if you're thinking Downton Abbey with votes and polls, will Matthew Crawley you know, be killed or not this episode, would be really bad. So I don't think it's for everything. But it may be possible that in the future, Big Brother you know, is just wallpaper that plays 24-7, and you are part of Big Brother. You're playing along on the screen that you can touch, and the interactions of everyone are going onto your broadcast signal, onto the TV, through your set-top box. So maybe today, stop thinking just about second screen and start thinking about participation TV. Thank you.